The next project is a set of SSR Vienna dish faces. Um, just doing these in a silver. Um, I figured I'd take this opportunity to show you guys normally, so there's only two screws that hold this in. Uh, the way that you determine where the two screws are so you don't accidentally try to take out one of the screws that's not a real screw. These are actually just pressed into place. Uh, but they will come out, so if you put you know, an Allen head in them and pull them out, they will definitely come out, but then you got to get them back in, so that sucks. Um, normally the two bolts that you pull out are a Torx. They're either a T15 or a T20, uh, depending on the year that they're produced. Um, so that helps identify them, but most people end up losing those over time. So it's not uncommon to get a set of these where they're all Allen head. Um, that being the case, or that being said, this one is still a Torx, but I'm going to show you how this works. So the way that you determine which ones you actually pull out, the one that's in line with the valve stem is the one that you pull out first. So, I mean, you have that one right here. The next one is the one that's at like 10 o'clock or 1030, whatever it would be. Um, when you're looking at it with the valve stem at the bottom. So it's just an easy, quick way of doing it. Um, this is a Torx, but an Allen head fits in it. A little, another little pro tip for you guys. Um, once you pop these out, we'll have to get, uh, I'll show you actually go through how to get these out the safest way possible. These ones are actually super fragile, not in the sense that they'll crack. This clear acrylic is actually really thick. But when you peel them off the back, it tends to rip the back layer of chrome off, which is what gives the color up here. So as long as you don't do it, rip the chrome anywhere that the letters are, you'll never know the difference. And then I usually paint the back of them um, black, just as like another layer. So when you tape them again, if you have to pull them off, um, you'll just rip off the new paint that you put on, as opposed to worrying about damaging these impossible to find you know irreplaceable center plates or center caps for these plates plates are also nearly impossible to find i actually was looking at having these made for a long time so we'll uh, get the rest of these apart right now and get them in the stripper All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to pull these center discs out, these little pieces out of here. Um, the best way to do this is soak, I recommend doing this to anybody who's never done this before, more specifically, it's to soak this back area in uh, like Goo Gone or Goof Off, um, any sort of adhesive remover that'll just help break down this adhesive quite a bit. Um, another option is to heat up this area with a heat gun or hair dryer if you don't have access to a heat gun. But you never want to pry anything from the front of this because this acrylic, although it's pretty thick, it, the edges of it will chip incredibly easy. So best thing to do is slip a thin screwdriver underneath here, underneath one edge, and twist. And just work yourself around. And you'll hear it release. You're not trying to get it all to pop off. I mean, you're going to want to go all the way around to get this to actually release. Um, you actually go more than all the way around most of the time. So. You just keep working in a circle and it will get easier and easier as more of the adhesive starts to release. And once it gets out to the point that you can just reach in and grab it, like that, and pop it off. And then, as far as getting this tape off, it's kind of the same way. You definitely want to use like Goo Gone or something along those lines. Um, you don't want to let it sit too long on here because it will actually start to eat the chrome finish that's on the back side of this. So yeah, just gonna do that with the rest of these and I'm gonna pop all these out as well. I guess I'll show you guys how to do that here in just a minute after I pull the rest of these out. All right, so now we got those out. Um, you're gonna shove, this is a four and a half millimeter Allen. Um, that's what fits on Vienna Christ, you know, obviously, a lot, or Vienna wheels. A lot of these are gonna be different. Um, but you just put these in. These aren't actually even threaded in. They're just pressed into place, they're splined. But you can twist them and usually try to kind of pull out. And a lot of times they'll start to release and pop out. If this doesn't work, which this one is basically threading out the more I pull on it, that's what you end up with. Um, if this does not work to do it this way, which 
it usually gets most of them out and there'll be a couple stubborn ones that don't pull out. You can just take something that's the right size and just pop this out from the back. Um, set this up, you can either set it up on something plastic like this so there's room for it to drop down into it. Um, you obviously don't want to be pounding it out into a flat surface because then it can't pop out. So you can usually just pop these out from the back and put a little PB or WD-40 or something to help them release a little bit. So I'm gonna go through and get the rest of these popped off. All right, got these uh, faces out of the chemical stripper. Gonna start sandblasting them right now. The cap's all out. So, get going on that. All right, got these things all outgassed. So, now I just gotta do some taping on the flanges. thinking about this the other day what do you uh what do you guys listen to while you're working if you're allowed to listen to music while you work i had a, a weird discussion with somebody a couple days ago about what he likes to listen to versus what i like to listen to and we both have similar types of jobs but it seems like the music that he would like to listen to while working would be the exact opposite of what i would want to listen to <laughs> Not because it's like bad music, just like it'd be hard to stay motivated to keep working and all that shenanigans. So I guess, uh, I don't know, what do you guys listen to? Put down in the comments. I guess I'm, I've been asking people kind of randomly, but this might be a, a good venue to ask people. Since you guys are already here and I, th I assume it's fairly easy to comment on your phone. I guess I never commented on my phone. I assume most people watch this on the phone. Flange all taped up. And then uh, anybody who's watching this, there are, there are powder coaters who will tape this flange off. Um, I will do it on request, but I tend to not do it. And the reason I don't is because now that this is sandblasted aluminum, um, it's a lot more porous than the original machine finish that was there. So corrosion happens much easier and much faster. Um, and where you don't want it is where the wheel seals. Um, this is actually a, you know, going into a, a welded lip and barrel. So it's probably not as much of a concern, obviously, but I do it this way. Like I said, it, I'll do it on request the other way if somebody wants. Came out here to say hi, but I guess he didn't care. Just went back in. Listen to this lo fi channel, like a live lo fi channel on YouTube, and it just one song is loud and then the next song's quiet. It's super annoying right now. <laughs> Keep having to adjust the sound back and forth. Or the volume back and forth, I guess. So we'll get all these taped up. Um, I guess I'll actually have to show you the masking that I use for the front of it as well. And these are going a color called Alien Silver. It's just a real high metallic silver, bright silver. It's a great color. It's not my favorite silver, but if 
you guys are ever looking for a, a super high metallic silver, heavy silver from Prismatic, is the Bee's Knees. It's definitely one of my favorites. So, all right, then the other issue, so this one has bolts, six millimeter bolts that go in on the back of this wheel. And because I buy bolts all the time, these are actually just extras from a project that is done, and these are all just leftover bolts. So I'm gonna use those to plug all these threads. I said in one of the other segments, I might actually be in this video, I haven't started the editing process yet, but um, I tend to use bolts more than plugs on a lot of stuff. Just because, I mean, ultimately they're they're cheaper and I think they do a better job. Um, you can use them way more often, or way more times than you can use plugs. Also up in this new, I got a new cord for this microphone. The last one has this weird static in it, some of the recordings, and I couldn't figure out what it was from, and it might have just been the like a faulty cord. So hopefully this video is better. Nobody complained about it. I just heard it and it was really annoying, so. So we'll get some bolts thrown in, all the rest of this. Actually, I guess what I should do is show you guys the other side. So this one, because it has those plates that screw into it, you have these two threaded holes you definitely need to plug. Um, but it's the same process. Obviously, you're just going to be cramming some bolts in or plugs, silicone plugs, if you want to go that route. And that'll be, uh, I'm going to mask this and the rest of those will be in a time lapse, I'm sure, and then we'll do the plates, but there's nothing really on the plates. I'm just gonna hang them, uh, blow them off, make sure everything's all good. So we'll uh, keep cracking with this project, moving forward. All right, got this uh, Alien Silver loaded up. Paces are all prepped. All been out gas, taped off, uh, or blasted, taped off, all that shenanigans. So start throwing color at these things. I do faces the same way as full wheels. All the hard places first, I always shoot the back first. That way, powder is moving its way to the front already and there's less stuff to put in the front. And I just fuck that up. Okay, so with these plates, I always hang them through the center hole. Uh, that way your hook mark is gonna be covered by the center cap or the center uh, logo that we took out earlier. Um, you can run it up through one of these other holes where you just run the chance of it touching the face and that sucks obviously. So, you throw in uh, powder on these and get them in the oven with the faces. And on these, I don't intentionally shoot the back. 
powder will get on the back. Um, one of the things you want to make sure to avoid is stacking too much powder on the back side of these because when you go to mount them down on the faces, you have too much powder up on these ridges and you have powder on the face of the wheel, this plate won't fit down into it. It'll be crammed in place. There's some local coders have done that and you know had to pound the, either sand down all the stuff to get it to come or to fit or they'll get them into place, but then you gotta figure out a way to get them off. And when they're mounted on a car, that's nearly impossible, so. Do the last two of these. Hopefully it doesn't make this video too ridiculously long. I put together another video and when I imported the files into it doing it with this kind of new style, the video was like 48 minutes long and normally they're about 25 minutes long before I edit. I like to try to keep videos down in the 15 minute range, you know, 10 to 20 minutes seems reasonable. I feel like a video longer than that, there's probably no reason for it. Um, although admittedly, the, the video that I have for the equipment is in fact longer. By now you should have at least known it's funny I'm mad famous for being unknown Hey thanks for watching that video There's a couple more right here in case you're bored and want to binge watch me powder coating um, Hit the subscribe button I guess while you're here The little notification bell It'll tell you every time we post a video so you can binge watch one at a time That's not a thing